Hello everyone, we're back. Uh, we literally just, this is like, not even two seconds after we recorded the last one. Mm. But for the sake of your convenient time plot knowledge things, I imagine that this takes place several hours later, or even days, maybe even years. I'm in college now. I mean, mm, it's funny. So am I. Oh, are you, are, oh, you said it before you're going in uh, game design, right? Yeah. I know that's what third is. Yeah, game on and design. Third and you, third and Ian are all in college for game design. Mmm, sweet. Uh, this story is. Let me. Um, I always try to look to see if there's a uh, credit here. So, uh, uh, unfortunately, right. uh, I I I don't know why. Just randomly, certain people have leaves credits and certain people don't. It's kind of odd. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is under the category of beings and demon slash devil. Okay. Okay. Uh, the little girl and the woodsman. Oh, the little, wait. The little girl in the woodsman and the woodsman, not in the woodsman. Okay. Okay. Because it sounded like in the woodsman, which that part I was like, wait, what? Little girl in the woodsman, written by an agent of Namla. Yeah. <laughs> but okay. So and the woodsman. All right. Oh, 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 oh. Mm. Drunken Santa, I wanna, I wanna football this next Christmas. <laughs> you're gonna get scotch, and you're gonna like it. But I'm allergic to scotch. <laughs> well, that's not my problem. There was once an elderly woodsman who spent, who would spend his winter nights locked away in a small cabin atop a great hill. He was what you might call reclusive, and seldom enjoyed others' company more than the silence of his own. He had one companion in life, his dog. The man had cared for the dog since a since a pup, you think since he was a pup, but whatever. Uh, and in the same way, he cared for his dog. So the dog, so did the dog care for him. Okay, he adored the same. He adored the time he spent alone with just his dog. Well, he's not alone if there's someone there. Yep. <laughs> with the dog and himself, no meaningless conversations to carry on, no feelings to be had. You just said he enjoys it. Isn't happiness a feeling? Yeah. But one thing was missing in the man's life. Although he never... Although he never knew to... Th he knew never to think of it. Okay, there we go. I, I kind of slipped up. That was my fault, not the story. Yeah. He had always wanted to carry a child to carry on after him. Like men often do. I don't think I like where this is going. No. Yeah. Please tell me the dog's a male. <laughs> as soon as the old man grew older he realized that his blood would die along with him which is is something that tormented the old man's thoughts uh, ten swap there buddy the only thing which hindered these thoughts was f excuse me <clears throat> the only thing which hindered these thoughts was for the old man to keep himself busy with a daily routine and so he did that was awkwardly phrased, I think. Mm. It was a day like any other atop, uh, like any other atop, up upon the hilltop. Excuse me. The old man was fetching wood for the night when it dawned on him that a blizzard was approaching overhead. Uh, could you notice? Well, no, uh, then again, if he's off the grid, I guess he would find out. I guess it kind of yeah. comes naturally to notice that. Okay, I'm not gonna complain. This meant, this story is giving me surprisingly little to complain about so far. Yeah, yeah. So far, all I just hear is some slight uh, mis grammar or something. You know, it's like like wording. You know, uh, it, uh, this is kind of a breath of fresh air for this uh, show, at least. Well, show being in quotation marks. Yeah, let's just hope it doesn't do like a big twist that actually turns out to be pure shit. <laughs> this made the old man think he might want. To tent swap he might want to bring in enough wood to last a few days being that he was not in the same strip he was not the same strapping young man he used to be i just like just like the wording of that that's, that's all that's all i'm putting emphasis on mm -hmm. one who could dig out the snow pack one who could dig out the snow packed door of the cabin and when needed when need be so he began bringing in bundles of, bundles of wood and placing them at, on the cabin door. The old man went out to retrieve the last bundle of wood he thought would be appropriate for a snowing. 
While he was grasping the last pile of wood, something in the snow caught the old man's eye. Something... Wait. Is that... Did I skip ahead? I think I did. Mm. Something had run off into a, a trees only a few feet from where the, he now stood. It was a small creature the man thought... All the, it was a small creature the man thought, although... Commas, man! It was a small creature the man thought, although he could not be sure, as the snow was coming in down so heavily. He saw the creature drop something in the snow while it was while making its escape, and being so inquisitive, the man made after it. Uh, I think it would have benefited you to describe the creature so I can have a decent mental image. A small creature, yeah. like maybe was it shaped like a rat, a rabbit, or was it kind of like a a hu crunched over humanoid, or like, a deer, or anything? Again, this is not this is more. It's not really a nip like It is a a. It's just a minor issue I have with it like uh again the yeah. whole thing is to paint a decent mental image for the viewer you always have to bear that in mind when you write stories like this yeah enough to kind of give you an idea but at least uh, still enough to give you also a bit of imagination yeah uh being so inquisitive the man made after it it was that very moment that along came a strong gust of wind <laughs> and so the man only had time to grab whatever the creature had dropped and made his way out f before the door wait he didn't. He took his firewood inside, did he? Uh, that I don't think so. <laughs> well, I'm just gonna just pick this random thing off the ground instead of the thing I need to live. Yeah, and was he? From the way it sounded, was he specifically going after the the thing the thing dropped, or was he literally going after the Anna? Because it, it no, sounded. I, like... I I think it's kind of clear that he was like trying to get the thing he dropped. I assume so. It just seemed like I, I, it seemed like one one of the words you said just seemed to pull took me out and said said wait I, I, did it, was he going after the animal instead? But I, I, it probably was just my mind messing with me with it. Mm -hmm. The old man slammed the door shut. The snow and frost with it. He then looked down at what he retrieved in the snow. He couldn't believe his eyes. The what the small creature had dropped before darting off into the woods. Well, this young girl's rag doll that was uh, worded awkwardly. It was tattered and ripped and had the appearance of being very old. The man, the, the man, uh, there's unnecessary comma, the man knew not what to think. He thought back to the, uh, the silhouette of the creature he observed and wondered what it could have been to have stolen the little girl's doll. A little girl's doll, excuse me. Mm -hmm. I don't know, you never know. So maybe this, this should come from a progressive family. Maybe it was a boy's doll, you never know. Yep. Boys can play with Barbies too. If they're pussies! Mm hmm. I was saying it as a joke. You just agree with me unironically. You're a douche. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to bend my head around this because honestly, I'm saying not huge much to complain about this story so far. I'm just hearing. Yeah, this story sucks. Where's the hyper realistic blood and Sonic coming out and being my waifu? <laughs> it, it's actually kind of. Like I gotta say, so far, it has something interesting to it. It's not. It's nothing like that original, but it. it it has a, something in there, and despite its slight like like grammar errors, <laughs> I think though that's the one. But the grammar errors here, well, it's not even really grammar error. I think it's more like the wording. It feels like the sentence run off a little bit longer than they need to, and that yeah. kind of takes me out of the story because as I'm reading it, I uh, I keep stumbling. Yeah, the, I stumble over myself a lot when I do these readings, but I'm having more issue here because like I expect the sentence to end, and then it's a random comma instead of a period. So I kind of have to keep going, and it just kind of makes me lose my place. Yeah, yeah, I, I see what you mean. And um, at the very least, I'm I'm seeing an admirable effort in here, so I gotta keep. I'm gonna keep going. Yeah. He sat back in the chair and pondered the, and pondered this while imploring the dog to sniff it and scratch, sniff and scratch and invent. There's no two ends. You just let comma and then. The other thing, but sniff and scratch and investigate the doll in its own ways. The man stood up and decided to go back outside for a quick look before the storm got any worse. But no sooner did he reach the door did the man hear three loud bangs. Damn it, is it the ba is it the Baba Duke? <laughs> oh, I love that movie. Yeah. <laughs> did that movie have a soundtrack technically, or was it predominantly silent? It had a mix of both. By the way, go watch that movie, and if you don't like that movie, that's fine, but if you thought it was a bad movie, fuck you! It's on Netflix Instant Play now. So oh, it is? Oh, damn, yeah. I, need, I need to get around to it. Yep. Yeah. I need to see it again. Um, 
a quick inquiry. Um, is it just me that noticed that Babadook is like, like almost point for point the, the story's plot is a well written version of Laughing Jack? Yeah, I guess so. You know, it, it actually took like they took the symbolism uh, of the. Uh, I'm not gonna say too much about, it, but the the issue with grief and everything. But I'm not gonna say anything more about. That I, I know. I'm, I'm talking about basically like the mother, the son, the dog, the supernatural creature. Yeah, yeah, and, no, but I mean, it it does have like some of that, but at least, you know, when it well, comes down to it, the Babadook actually knows how to write a story. <laughs> I can't wait to look for. I really look forward to what uh, the director comes out with next. And more symbolic horror is what I think is warranted, and it could be a start of something uh, better for horror movies. Yeah, it's, it, it did. We it did see more of those. It did make twice his budget, so that's good. Um, back to the story. He yep. thought immediately that it mu must have been an able-bodied young man, much like he used to be. And we need. We get it. You were awesome. You don't need to remind us. Yeah. And so. The old man did, with mild reluctance, open the door slowly. He looked around and saw nothing until a faint noise he heard from underneath his knees. What? I, this is really phrased awkwardly. No. Hello, sir. I've come back from my Sasha. A, a young child, no older than, said a young child, no older than four. The man found it rather embarrassing that the young girl had frightened him so intently. And, and intently kind of means that she did it on purpose. Mm -hmm. I think that's not the right word you're going for. And again, I could be wrong. I'm not. I'm walking the source here. He looked down at the girl, little girl in amazement and said back to her, What are you doing out here, child? You'll be dead before morning. He then picked up the girl and brought her inside and sat her down by the fire. She said no words. In fact, the only noises she made were the only noises being made were the crackling of the fire and the quiet humming and whimpering of the old man's dog who pinned himself into the corner of the small cabin. The man had put... The <sighs> oh, pardon me. Excuse me. I was trying to lean away from the microphone when I did that. The man had put the doll he found upon the table before he approached his front door, and so he turned to give it to the little girl, but it was gone. He peered down at the young child, who appeared miles below his massive physique. That was just... Was he some kind of titan or something? <laughs> I know it's hyperbole, but it's kind of unwarranted here. Like, you know, yeah, we don't really need to constantly hear him that he was once or is still like very pow a very powerful man. At, unless the the guy who's writing this is trying his hardest to keep us thinking that okay, this guy is a tough man, but even he can't take care of he can't handle whatever this thing is like he's trying like they're trying to make it so they so, try to so it's it's basically like a Chekhov's gun yeah, like, like you're introduce show you're introducing a, a story element and you're going to have it kind of come into play is what you're saying yeah like i'm thinking like they're trying to remind us that hey this guy is supposed to be tough but even he can't is not capable of what's going to happen which is probably the sense of their method of using to in illustrate about what this force is you know without you know, telling people that it was, it's tough or something. <laughs> yeah. He noticed her playing with something. When he peered closer, he realized that she was fiddling with the, do the child's doll he had left on the table. Was it you who dropped this earlier? The man asked. Before he ran off into the woods? The little girl, the girl finally turned around and said, Of course not, silly. She dropped me. It was then that the young girl's little doll stretched its leg and began scurrying her around the inside of the cabin. The woodsman had no time to be surprised over this as he suddenly became deeply captivated by the young girl, young child, young child gaze. I mean, the young child's gaze. Okay, that just felt like it just, that was just way too sudden. Yeah, there's, if it, like, um, to, to me, the, like, this has an interesting, uh, I don't want to say premise because we don't really necessarily know the premise as of yet, but a setting uh, yeah. where this guy lives alone with just his dog and this random little girl comes in and he's kind of off the grid. So yeah, and also he, uh, like during a blizzard also. <laughs> yeah, like this could make for an interesting uh, horror scenario both in both sides. Like uh, you, you're wondering if this man is going to do something horrible or if this child has some unnatural thing about her. 
like it it opens the door for a lot of um psychological horror and yeah, um, it and just simply goes away once you just instantly say oh she dropped me and then suddenly the thing does something out of the blue which just seems like you know you could have made a lot of build up with that like when she says she dropped me you could have just you know continue the story and let things slowly happen but no they just simply say oh this big thing just happened it's kind of like like suddenly what if uh like i think also the problem is that the girl was just guy oh sorry go ahead no it's like just imagine like what if like if in poultry guys they the like they know, they know it's like the weird slight things and the the girl says they're here and then suddenly a demon just burst out just screaming out at the top of the lawn you know yeah the, the, it's like, the, okay just ruin any mister any like mystery or build up to this horror you know yeah it's like Chris Stuck Chris Stuckman put it best and uh, uh, I know you probably that sounds like something you'd be subscribed to right Alex uh, maybe I don't know <laughs> uh, Chris Stuckman who did a thing. Uh, uh, what's everything wrong with horror movies? And it kind of is applicable to stories on Creepy Pasta Wiki. Oh, you mean the the Cinema Sin guy? No, right? no, 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 no. It's um another gentleman by the name of just Chris Stuckman. Oh, uh, more, okay. he, he's a lot more uh, soft spoken and uh, uh, quiet than a lot of uh, reviewers out there, which is a decent breath of fresh air. But mm -hmm. one of the points he makes that like his analogy, he said, uh, horror is like sex. Like, you don't want to blow your load too often, like, overstimulate, and then people get used to it, and they become numb to it after a while. You gotta gradually build up, and right here, like, this child was only introduced, like, roughly two paragraphs ago. She doesn't have enough of a character for this to be, uh, jarring f for whatever she's intending, or intending to do, you know? And the, and the sad part is, is that you actually felt in the story that there was a bit of a build-up starting up. Yeah, like you actually felt the slow build up, and it's like, oh, this is starting to get interesting. And then, bam, it shooted slow already. What the hell? Okay, let me uh, try to get back to this and see. We'll, we'll yeah. see where it goes at the very least. Her eyes yeah, were hope. full of excitement on a level he had never seen before, let alone felt. The young girl was overjoyed, and the woods old woman, woods old woodsman, could not look away at the commotion the doll was creating. All around the house, echoes. Uh, echoed the beats of a thousand little footsteps up along up the walls down the walls there should be a comma there but the woodsman simply could not take his gaze off the little girl sitting right outside his fireplace why wouldn't you be i would be probably you know not paying attention to her i'll be paying attention to the little crindling doll running around the the built at the house no my agent of nambla joke from the beginning of this is taking a horrifying new light Mm. He can't take her eyes off her. <laughs> oh, God. Then, all of a sudden, the little footsteps stopped, and something in the little girl's eyes had changed. They were no longer innocent, and he, didn't, he never mentioned that they were innocent, and endless. Yeah. They turned dark and desolate within a moment's time. Oh, Ring. hold on. Yeah, I'm sorry, I got a phone call. Okay. Ring. Ring. Oh. Uh, please put your mic on mute. Yeah, I'll minute. do that. Back on, sorry about that. That was my mom. You acting like your family takes priority over a stranger you talk to over the internet. Maybe. <laughs> then all of a sudden, a little. Uh, okay, I, I read that part. Um, finally, the man set free from the child's piercing eyes turned around to see the rag doll lying on the floor lifeless next to the old man's only companion, the dog. Oh my god. His dog, which was now hanging by its neck by an old piece of chicken wire, also lifeless. What do we just say? What do we say in the last video about casually glossing over death? Yeah, it. it that's just was just so sudden. There's no him. Just a little bit of build up of his fright of seeing his dog like that. And again, I'm actually even questioning it. Like, I can't tell. Is this supposed? How big is this cabin? Is there? multiple rooms or something because I, I almost assumed that wouldn't the dog be in the same room as he is with the girl but I guess you know she was so focused on her that he couldn't hear the dog barking until it eh. <sighs> also the dog didn't really have much of a pr it literally was presented in the beginning of the story and it had no presence until the like this part right here yeah and again like it's not like in the Babadook where there actually the dog had some presence around it's like well, yeah I love I actually grew to really like it's like one of that that scene where um 
I'm not really spoiling anything by saying that the mother seems to be slowly descending into madness. Yeah. And the dog is kind of get being protective. And uh, she has a, a nightmare sequence, and she wakes up and see the dog, like, s- over her sleeping son, staring at her, like, as if he's pr- trying to protect him. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's the, that's one badass dog. Yeah, despite it not being, like, a very tough dog. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The man finally gets uh, set free. The old man went to a frenzy of emotions. The same emotions he had kept inside for so long were now rushing out of him for so long. Okay, we established this, I guess. Panic, anger, mm-hmm. and most of all, confusion were all he felt. Within a few... Only a matter of minutes, the entire world had changed. It's just a dog. He grasped... Well, well. I, I understand. I, I'm being too hard on that, but still, it's like... Yeah. I, you you barely if, if we had you barely presented us with what this dog did that this dog was with him for years what did he raise it when it was at for from birth or anything did he give us something so we have an idea that this guy has a bond with the dog and we can t- attach a bond with the dog but we yeah basically like it did say that he had a a, a razor from a pup but again that's an informed attribute you have to actually show us show don't tell basically. Yeah, or at least give us some, like, bond that they have. Like, you can actually t- feel like, like they have that you can actually see this guy actually has an attachment towards the dog. But nothing. I mean, come on. Give us some things about him, like, calling out the dog's name or, and then, or heck, you had the girl come into the story. Why not have him, like, present the dog or the girl ask about uh, the dog tells the story about him or something. Give us some things, you know? I don't know, this reminds me of an old Twilight Zone episode I watched with uh, this man who uh, went um, raccoon hunting with his dog, this old man, and uh, his wife warned him not to do it because he was afraid that he might get injured and get hurt and be lost in the woods. Yeah. And you pretty much find out that he's dead. Like, he, he walks around, he jumps into a river to save his dog, they both end up dying, and they're kind of walking around as spirits, uh, confused to why everyone's ignoring them. Mm-hmm. And... The dog in that has a presence in that you can see and you can listen to and everything he says about his dog, we see the a very strong connection between the two of them. And his dog ultimately ends up kind of sa- like saving him from going to hell, basically. Mm-hmm. Like they, yeah. walk, they walk by the uh, gates of hell, it's, it's a, which is a picket fence that kind of looks like a normal, ordinary fence. The p- point is that they're, they're trying to fool him to getting there. Yeah, like a, a symbolic uh, trickery and stuff, yeah. But the dog won't let him go. And the the lesson of the uh, thing was, uh, even the angel explained, like, e- even a, a dog won't follow a blind man to hell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, so, okay. About the story. Let's continue. Yeah. He grabbed the child by the neck and looked her in the eyes. Did you do this, little girl? He yelled. The girl simply looked back in the old man's eyes and replied, no, silly, of course not. It was her. Well, ask a stupid question and get a stupid answer. Yeah, especially considering that you kind of could be aware that the thing was a little, was the doll thing. You would have probably considered to have witnessed it, you know? The mm-hmm. thing scurrying around. I mean, that would have been another thing. You could have even given us, like, a, a like no indication of if the doll did or not. Like, we could have, have a debate whether it would have been hit the yeah. girl or him or even the doll, you know, but nope, they, they already showed us what the thing does so we can already assume it was the doll that killed the dog. I actually have an idea for how this story could have been really damn good, but I'm going to save it till the end of this. Yeah, yeah. But while the old man was peering on her, his eyes were drawn, but while the old man was peering on his eyes, okay, were drawn again to the little girls like before, she did not scream for help, and sh- she did not try to escape. Instead, the little girl stared so deeply into the man's soul that he realized what he had done. He had taken the life of a defenseless child in the name of superstition. What? Wait, what? Okay. Oh. The old man sat back down in his chair and watched the young girl slowly turn to ashes. What? Huh? Slowly turned to ashes in the fireplace that he had built with his two hands, the smell of burning flesh now filling the air. The what old... did she 
fell in the fireplace when she when he, he when he finished strangling her or something. I think he threw her in. I don't. The old man. No one turns to ashes in the like in a fire in a minutes. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. I mean, okay. Motherfucker, do you science? Yeah. Okay. The old man looked around the room at the death that had transpired, which seemed like in a flash of time. No fucking shit. The old man approached the now deceased song, his very best friend and only companion for at least 13 years. He, he untangled the chicken wire around his desk, set him down on the floor. He looked down at his dog and noticed a single tear drop splash on the floor of the camera. Go fuck yourself. Oh, God damn it. Don't do that. That, that That's not a manly thing. The old that's, man... That's... Expired. That's movie I- idea of cool. Yeah. Not- the sexy cry is actually... Oh, God, listen to this. The old man expired alongside his dog, dead from a broken heart. And what? All was still in the house till a quiet whimper broke the silence. All of them dead in a matter of minutes, cried the little girl's doll. She jumped out of the window and silently down the hill. This was shite. That's how the story ends? Yeah. Really? What? That that's how it ends? The the doll just he he mm. die he's he puts the dog down on the floor, he cries one tear, and then suddenly die from a broken heart. You know who else Does... you know who else died of a broken heart? You? Anna uh what's her name in uh fucking Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, and it was just as stupid and contrived as it is here. Yeah, I, God, damn! What? What the hell? The thing that annoys me the most about this story is that they, you had such a solid setting and a horror concept. And the, be- no, in the like, beginning, besides from the miswriting in some ways with the sense and stuff, there actually felt like there was a build up to something. I mean, there should have been more... Again, one of the most common complaints you'll ever hear on this thing in particular is that I feel that stories like these aren't long enough. And the reason I say that is because I feel that more effort should be put into set giving a decent setting. And the thing is, with what you presented, and the idea you presented actually made me kind of supersede that criticism because if you were to have this set... Uh, the, the premise of the story, the the story itself, set in this cabin during this blizzard. Maybe this little girl comes in and he helps her out from the snow. And they're trapped in there for a while, so he can't go down to see about her parents. And they're stuck in there for quite some time. You could build up both of them slowly going insane. And also, which, like, slow... Which slow. led up to the, the whole thing, at the of this whole thing with them, dot of the death and everything. Like, like imagine if what I said before, the premise that I had put forward, where um, the them spending an extended amount of time with each other in this cabin, uh, slowly going insane, and keep the ending that this person wanted to give, like uh, him yeah. strangling that little girl. Yeah. That that would have that actually would have been a decent uh, a decent uh, or at the very least a understandable climax. Yeah, that it could have been, he, this could have been like a, a, a story about cabin fever, you know? Uh, he had a psychotic episode because of, uh, like you, know, like you said, cabin fever. Ended up accidentally strangling this girl. Or the better yet, like, uh, and, and you could also, the creepiness of the girl could be set in to where it could be a part of his mind. Maybe the girl was actually that creepy. Who knows? Like, leave it up to interpretation. And now, this this felt so... Like, like I said, decent, decent, or at the very least, I could see considerable effort to build up in the beginning, and yep. then it felt like this was completely rushed at the end. Basically, this felt like the first pasta I ever read, wrote. Yeah, it, I mean, oh my god, this just feels like a huge dis. This, this is actually, this one is actually just pure sad because when you, when, at least with the other stories we have re- come across and stuff, of. Uh, they at least w- from the first sentences we can tell like okay this is going to be shit or like it's de- gonna- just basically dead on arrival yeah but this one actually felt like hmm this actually is just starting to get interesting it actually feels like some build up sure there's some flaws with the writing but it looks like it might actually appear to be good i want to see it goes and then suddenly it just like 
blows that out of the water. It's like the person knew how to start the story, but he didn't know how to properly give it a middle and properly end it. The thing is, and I understand that there are some people that can actually improv like uh there are very few people I know that can improvise a story from start to finish and actually have it consistent, actually have it well written, actually have everything kind of come into place and everything have a satisfying payoff. Like the one person I can name on the top of my head and it's for comedy, it acts cop <laughs> because <laughs> that guy's literally making shit up as he goes along and it's always less to an insane amount of just over the top what the fuckery. Yeah. And here is I, I get the feeling that you knew what you wanted to do, but you didn't have the patience to to see it through to the end. And yeah. I speak from experience and I'm not trying to single this one person out. You should n every story you ever write should be treated with patience because okay. the one point that you always want to remember and this is again I'm guilty of this the first story I ever read wrote and I'm going to cover it one day when I get the chance to my um the play guard is look it up on it's actually on creepypost.com and uh I had the same, I made the same mistake where I was so eager to get what I wrote out there that I missed spell check a few times. I didn't reread it to just make sure it was consistent. I, like, uh, I kept referencing things that were redundant. I repeated myself frequently. The same thing happens here. You, this yep. person was so excited to put it out that he did not take the time to read it to see if everything fit into place to see if it had a satisfying conclusion yep. never make that mistake yep and i think the other thing that's worse about it is that i feel like this guy like if he was attempted to write it a short story he really did not know that the stuff he had was a, was more than the than was too much for a short story you know like, it presented all these elements at once, and if you're not going to do anything with them, then you don't really need to introduce it to them. Like, why yeah. was there even a dog? Like, the dog was only there to, sh to be killed, basically, yeah. like to show a sense of escalation, but that sense of escalation came <laughs> immediately when the dog started walking around the, uh, the place, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, and it's just like, and there was no build-up. We could have... The there was some build-up, or even form of mystery there was like you removed any form of mystery which basically even had the question of like why would the old man kill the girl and not like you know get that shotgun and try to you know or an axe and try to get the doll you know yeah like why like also you know you know what else I actually kind of is a big question mm -hmm. was there really even a point of him mentioning that whole thing about the one thing he what he is lacking in his life is a child. The, the, was there really any connection in that story? I think the idea is that it's supposed to be ironic considering the child is what... He wanted a child, he ends up killing a child. It's just... It's it's not... This is not well thought of. I will... Re There's only two comments here, and I'll, I'll read them right now, because essentially, yeah. one, the one, one of them is uh, the uh, writer responding to this person. Okay. And this person essentially says, like, uh, okay, um, from Crashing Symbol... Uh, Okay, well, to start off, I was quite impressed. Your story is quite good. You kept the description of the setting and the characters simply, uh, and the characters simply, I think you mean simple, or whatever, uh, and very effective at the same time. The darting in the snow in the woods and finding the tattered doll was an effective way of building suspense. The problem with your story lie in the second half. The first half is really good. I think that's kind of overselling it, but we did say that the first half did actually have potential. Yep. Second half was was really only not bad uh, i disagree Te well you know what i don't know if it's necessarily the second half is bad per se maybe it's just a horrible it's just a very weak and kind of just very weak climax that hurts the whole thing so when I you compare it, it to the first half it, it basically is kind of like almost shit because it just seemed to <laughs> remove any form of attempt that the uh the first half had like the first half again while it's flawed it had signs of suspense. It had signs of creating something. Yeah. But then when you throw in all this like shit at random and even throwing out the words, he had one tear in his eye and he died from a broken heart. Oh, it's like, that's child. That, that's, that's childish. And a child would so. not be able to write like 
like something like the first half was. It's almost in the way to put it. It's like his mature side. He, he wrote the first half, and then he had his kid, or maybe his little brother. I don't know. Write the second half because that's what it feels like. It almost feels like a complete opposite of what the first part had. It's, and, like, it's like if Slime Beast wrote the beginning of it, and then the guy who wrote Jeff the Killer wrote the end. Yeah, yeah. And that's a compliment to Slime Beast. I'm not, again, I'm not knocking the guy. I He's really cool. He wrote some stories. That's just kind of our accepted, that's one of our acceptable targets here. We just uh, take jabs at him every now and again. It's all for fun, uh, Slime Beast. No hard feelings. Don't want you to think that we have anything against you. Yeah. Uh, I I'm only saying that because I know he can be quite sensitive. And I'm not I'm not saying that to make fun of him anymore because that also sounds like I'm making fun of him, but it's true he can be quite sensitive. Yeah. Uh, I thought uh, it's okay, basically it's okay, but at the same time it's disappointing. I thought it was rushed that you didn't put much thought into the critical horror parts. The description of the little footsteps was very effective. I, I barely actually noticed it honestly. Yeah. But then you had things like the very abrupt suicide. I felt you could have had more emotional build up to that part, and just saying that it, uh, on its own was r ju really just rather silly. Despite this, for something this short, it certainly shows effort and value. Just don't rush things, would be my advice to you. Basically, you, you said, know, the, he said pretty much said anything, everything we said. Yeah, uh, pretty, uh, uh, despite the fact that he says he, he thinks it's not as bad, but no, that, that second half was kind of bad. And. Just, I mean, it's not the war. It's not like terrible, but it's it's that that doesn't remove the fact that it's not good. <laughs> Wait a minute, what the fuck is it? actual criticism on the creepy puzzle? Like, what the fuck does this asshole think he is? Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. And the uh, creator, uh, SS Ramsey, uh, five one three. For some reason, I have always have a hard time reading numbers out loud. Interesting. Yeah. I will take your advice into serious consideration. I do tend to rush things in effort for the reader and sort of fill in the blanks it's an effort for the reader to fill in the blanks but in this case I'm sure I could have thought of something more effective that's a lot thanks a lot man here's the thing and I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not picking a uh, poking fun of the right I'm just uh, responding to him um, I understand what you mean that you some things need to be have blanks filled in with them like some some things are best left to the reader's imagination and I, I do agree with that. At the same time, you can't have that be the cr uh, the whole crutch of your character. Like, like what's happening right here? Like this random thing, this random evil killer doll thing that happens. Like, uh, I could you could make the argument. Okay, let's fine. Let's keep that in the story. Whatever. But what about certain things like uh, the guy wanting a child? Like plot elements should not. Ha uh, Plot elements should not require blanks to be filled in by the reader. Character motivation yeah. should not l have us fill in the blanks. And you, you got to give us some, like, information. You could give us a little bit enough to question them, to have a bit of it, but you got to at least give us enough to ground us enough to say, I kind of can understand a bit of why he's doing this. I don't agree with it, but I can understand why he might do this, you know? Or if, uh, or in the case of character studies, which a lot of the emphasis is put on the characters in the situations so we can try to yeah. understand why they're doing what they're doing, uh, yeah. then you can uh, have it where their actions are vague, but uh, even then you have to kind of give us brief hints, brief showings of who they are as people to a, kind a good of example, a good example, The Shining, Johnny, how he's presented, you know. Yeah, they throw in who he is, and they give us a, and it does show a build up to the point where we kind of see him going crazy, even, but it's very vague of why he goes fully insane. It's like some connections, there's some reasons, but it's not completely there. So we're left with imagination, but we still have a grounded enough, um person enough that we can actually attach to to actually kind of get a point kind of actually feel like the tension or anything you know well i said that correctly well to be fair that's just the move and i know stephen king doesn't like the kubrick version but yeah which it, it's it's dumb i, I like St i like king he's a cool guy and he is wrote some decent really good stories but at the same time it's like 
I don't think he understands that some things do not transfer well to his film. He improved your story. I'm sorry yep. to say that. Yep. Because, uh, and I, I really don't like to sound like I'm, like, talking shit about someone I respect. Your Shining story is an exercise in boredom and tedium. Yeah. But again, it's like, you know, some guy took your concept and improved upon it. I know. It. I know. If, it's like if someone took one of my personal favorite uh, stories that I wrote myself and I take pride in and made a movie adaptation that took away all the stuff I felt were uh, essential to the plot or essential to the uh, story. It doesn't matter how good it is. I'm, I will be upset, but still. You can understand that sometimes changes might actually make it for the better, especially considering the medium you're in. So, any yeah, last but, any last thoughts on this particular story, so we don't get too sorry, Jack? Well, yeah, I guess uh, just to make one thing is, I have to, at least, you know, uh, I have to at least give this guy the 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 creator some respect because the fact is he's not a whiny brat for, for having a criticism. He actually he does. There's a there's a sign that he has some flaws of understanding it, but at least in the point, but at least in the point, he actually appreciates a criticism and he admits his fall falls mm -hmm. to some point All right, so I have to say you know you know and considering that the amount of other people on this on creepy pasta who literally try and defend their work and thinking that their work is genius aka a uh oh god a JC the high JC and Mr. Angry Dog assholes like those yeah yeah, so this guy, while well, he made a, he has a story that had some buildup, and then he kind of made it the, uh, the second half bad. At least he admits it, and he actually is fair to say, "I made some mistakes. I'm gonna probably try to fix this in the next story I make." So I have to give my respects to to him on that. You know, I you don't get a, those kind of people a lot on creamy pastas, uh, sometimes. Yeah, but but. but, but so, but besides from that, I still have to say that this story just felt like a disappointment because it was like actually a story that at first I almost felt like I was getting into despite its flaws. Like it, it's it's only flaws I felt was just some writing issues here. But for the but again, once it once it got to that second half, it just really dropped the ball to the point where I just had to say, although you know, we, I I was disappointed. <laughs> Although I, I I did show a little bit more venom towards this uh this a, a little bit more venom towards this story than some of the others I've covered before, I would like to say that I think it's mostly because I read the comment and saw his disposition and saw that he was more willing to own up to sh sh any shortcomings that he may have uh, done in the story that kind of yeah. that gave a gave me a warmer perception of him. Yeah. Um, the thing, the thing that uh, made me so adamant and so kind of, um, you know, kind of blunt with my criticism of the story was the fact that I hate, like, the story, demonic empathy, whatever the fuck, self-insert, Mary Shul bullshit. The difference between that story and this one is that I read this story and I'm more disappointed at Wasted Potential. Yeah. I don't like wasted story concepts. I don't like when people are prove themselves to be a potentially interesting or like the concept that this guy came up with, like the setting and whatnot, shows that he has a good, a uh, good mind for a setting. So that yeah. means he has potential to grow as a writer. And I don't like seeing this potential wasted. That other yeah. story I wrote, like. I was angry at that, but at the end of the day, I'm going to go to sleep forgetting about all about that. This, above all things, kind of annoys just me. just move on with your next work. Yeah, but this, above all things, I, I can't help but have this linger in the back of my mind at, at points because I want this person to be, be, be better because he shows he's capable of doing such. And considering yeah. how he responds to criticism as the way he did, I'm more than confident that he can potentially... Uh, grow as a writer and I hope he does and SS Ramsey 513 if ever you stumble upon this story I would like to I would like you to link any other because this is about a year ago mm. link any other stories that you have written since then I, I'm not going to guarantee that I'm going to like them immediately but I would like to see where you've grown as a writer I would like to help you improve 
And I say this to every, I say this on every single one of these random possible critiques, where I encourage that the person that wrote it, if they, if I feel they have potential, send me other stories they've written, so I can uh, get a good eye of what they're doing and what they're doing wrong, because I do want to help them improve. Yep. And I, but yeah, I, I'm fully with you on that. It's, it's basically this is a, this was a story that actually is disappointing. It, it it's disappointing because it had its, it had so much potential to it and there was a mess up. I hope this guy makes something really some like takes these criticisms and actually does something great. And it does seem like he he does take these criticisms and is going to do that. So I I do hope he comes up with some better stories. But again, it still removes the it can't, I can't remove the fact that man I almost had a chance to hear a like a hidden. It almost felt like for a moment i there was a hidden gem here but yeah it, it wasn't fully there it's that's like that this point you almost felt like you were about to get that found that hidden gem but it turned out to be um just a mess a tiny bit of a mess <laughs> like if you want to take uh uh like if you want a frame of reference on how you uh to kind of react to criticism for any writers out there and we rag on, again, we rag on him a lot, but I actually do kind of respect him in this sense. Slime Beast. And he will get a little bit up in arms sometimes when it comes to defending uh, anything he's written. But that comes more from his enthusiasm from what he's... Like, basically, every story means something special to him. So, mm -hmm. he, it kind of... Uh, it's kind of a sting to him whenever someone says something... anything harsh about the story but at the end of the day if you uh present your case in a respectful manner he always will take a time to evaluate the story and like admit his shortcomings mm -hmm. like no matter how great or how much you love what you've written always bear in mind there there is no such thing as a perfect story yep, like there's no such thing except harry potter no uh, <laughs> uh like there, every even the best story ever written, ever conceived, there usually has at least one or two hiccups, or even not. Even, you there, it can't even be. A, it doesn't even have to be a matter where the story is just in, flawed in some places. It could be improvements that even the creators didn't think of. Yep. Like uh, it could be uh, uh, I don't know, like a world's most functioning car that could have a few more things added to it to make it function even better yeah so always bear that in mind criticism is healthy but at the same time always be respective respectful about your criticism and like well i i i was about to say that but then again i as harsh as i was to demonic i kept saying fuck you over and over again but in my defense stuff like that can put you in the, that kind of mood like that like Honestly, no effort puts whatsoever, and just bottom of the barrel, Jeff. Pretty much, that was written by someone who thinks Jeff the Killer is not as bad as people make it out to be. Yeah, but well, yeah, I think uh, it all said this story. We can end, probably end this by saying, "Do with you, you, dude. You may not made a gr you. You did disappoint us with your story, but you got you have our respects for." It your attempts, and your acceptance of criticism. So this is Vince 12 and Alex Alinkowitz, a.k.a. Alex O, a.k.a. the street sweeper of the London Keeper, whatever. Uh, <laughs> signing out. Um, and uh, again, feel free to check out his channel uh, for many Let's Plays that he does. He's actually quite... Well, I don't know if he's going to say he's good at Let's Play. Uh, he's entertaining. <laughs> You don't Let's have to. Thanks. Well, you don't have to be a good Let's player to be entertaining. And that's. I am the best Let's player in the world. You must accept me as your holy one and kick PewDiePie down and put me on the throne. Well, you, okay. well, well you're more entertaining than PewDiePie. Oh, sure. I went there. <laughs> uh, but seriously, uh, y'all have a good night and uh, God bless. As I. I don't say that as much as I used to, but I always think it in the bottom of my heart. Except for the people I don't want to bless. Fuck you. <laughs>